Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to be pulling out the uh, 1.9 liter water boxer engine out of the uh, 85 uh, Vanagon Westphalia that we have. Um, we're going to be putting in the 2.2, but this is where the rubber meets the road. We're going to um, undo all the connections um, and disconnect this engine and get it ready to store. Somebody's coming to pick it up. So um, it runs okay. <laughs> but not as well as a Subaru. So uh, follow along as we get this uh, engine pulled out. Here's the uh, 1.9 liter engine that we're gonna pull out. Uh, let's go ahead and start it up and see how it sounds. This engine has a lot of clatter, um, most likely in the heads, just because it hasn't been uh, run very much and uh, it's not warm right now. I'm getting ready to pull this engine and uh, what it's gonna require is um, getting to the uh, bell housing where the engine meets the transmission and there are actually two um, fasteners up at the top and then two at the bottom and then there's the engine carrier the mustache bar if we come down here uh, it's this piece right here that connects to the frame so um, there's two I believe two bolts on each side and we're gonna undo that and um, and start working out all the uh, all of the radiator hoses hoses all of the electrics we're gonna disconnect and uh, if you're looking to uh, reuse this engine or give it to somebody who wants to reuse it might be wise to label the connections you know obviously like over here there's some other like ignition on wiring uh, from the coil which we'll label as well but everything else is pretty you know pretty unusable we're not going to really use a whole lot um, one thing to make note of is the brake booster here. This uh, f pipe actually goes up to the brake booster and it needs vacuum in order to um, power the brakes. So uh, we're going to put a, t uh, a nipple on the Subaru engine that sits right about right here and it's going to connect to that. So we're going to go ahead and get started on pulling this engine. First thing to do is to uh, remove the cap on the pressure bottle. And then if we come down below, we can see that uh, we're draining coolant uh, in the cylinder head, on the SAD5 at least. On the cylinder head, we have um, an Allen head that you just undo and drain into a bucket. While the coolant's draining, uh, I'm gonna take out the air box and start uh, getting at these upper coolant hoses and um, any extra wiring and whatnot just gonna bring it uh, either toward the um, van or toward the engine depending on how it's connected that way when we go to undo everything it'll just come out in one piece at this point I remove the air box and the wiring harness on uh, the passenger side here that wraps around and connects to the computer and the computer's harness. So that's basically the main wiring harness for the engine. So that's uh, that's off. So now I have really good access to the uh, coolant lines. So that's coming off next and then we'll work on things like throttle and that brake booster line and anything else that might um, impede us from taking this off. Now the radiator hoses are removed and the throttle is disconnected and the brake booster is disconnected. The only things left holding the engine um, accessory wise are the return fuel line and the supply fuel line here. I I'm just gonna wait because I hate the smell of gas and <laughs> gonna wait until the engine's ready to come out completely before I uh, crimp these and um, disconnect them. 
So uh, the other things that have been done are uh, taking out the bolt on this end here and remove the nut on this end holding it together and I loosen the starter as you can see and I'm um, hoping to get this uh, bolt out. I haven't uh, I haven't really messed with it yet. <clears throat> and I've done the two nuts on the bottom side of the bell housing as well. And they're studded so basically the engine has to come out a little bit or it can drop down and then out. So that's what we're gonna do. So I've got the cherry picker lined up here and it is ready for action. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, we've got the cross member uh, bolts to undo. There's two on this side, two on the other, attach into the frame. And the this little tin here um, is actually attached to the muffler bracket. So um, you have to undo that those two bolts as well. And I've also put a jack stand underneath the transmission just because I don't want it to swing down too far the transmission itself otherwise it messes with uh, shifter linkage so um, next up is uh, attaching the um, cherry picker the engine hoist and um, undoing these bolts and then slowly lowering it down and then pulling the uh, engine forward so that it clears this uh, tin and then um, kind of wiggling and <laughs> getting the engine free from the transmission. And the cross member bolts have been removed and uh, the engine is slowly making its way down. It has just about cleared the um, heat guard on the back here. Um, one thing that uh, is super helpful is taking off the oil fill um, tube and I don't know if you can see it in there. Let's get some more light. It's kind of like a press fit in there, but you can um, you can actually just kind of wiggle it off. Uh, it'll take some strength, but it'll come off. And uh, you can see that it makes the uh, job a lot easier. It'll uh, it'll just rub on this heat shield just a little, but not too bad and the transmission is coming down just a little bit and um, pretty soon here we'll be able to pull forward on it and separate it from the the engine so you can almost see a little bit of a like a hint of separation right there here's the uh, heat shield that protects the uh, the engine from the muffler heat and um, you can see that the transmission's lowered down onto a jack stand, and uh, we've got plenty of room here to pull forward, or backwards actually, and um, separate the transmission from the uh, from the engine. So that's what we're going to do now. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth until it uh, separates pretty good right here. So now we're uh, completely separated from the transmission. This one just slid right out. I mean, it took, you know, 10 seconds and uh, came, came right out. So now we're just gonna lower the uh, engine down onto a piece of wood, uh, down on the legs of the cherry picker and pull it out right out. Uh, we may need to jack up the van just a touch, just so it'll clear, but uh, this has uh, been a pretty effective method for me. Here we have it. It just cleared. Um, in fact, you can use um, a little bit of the height right underneath the uh, right uh, quarter panel here to uh, clear the alternator. Uh, now, this is just very specific to my setup, so um, could help some others out, though. Anyway, I'm going to offload this guy and uh, we're pretty much done with the uh, engine pool. And here we have the empty engine bay. It's uh, somewhat cleaned up. Um, sprayed some degreaser around and and it's it's getting pretty clean, but still gonna do a little bit more. Anyway, that about wraps it up for uh, the engine pool 
and um, just want to thank you for watching and next up we're going to prep the chassis um, for acceptance of the uh, Subaru engine so follow along as we do that next week